All right, this video is a continuation in a series about attributions. And so previously I gave the general introduction to just what an attribution is, what attribution theory is. And now let's talk about some specific types of attributions that we can generate. Now remember an attribution is basically an explanation that you come up with for someone else's behavior. You can have internal attributions and external attributions. With internal attributions, you're assuming, you're assuming that something about the person, something that's internal to the person can explain their behavior. This could include something like, hey, that person is late because they're an irresponsible or lazy person. Uh, that person is um, uh, disorganized right now because that's just their style. They are that kind of a sloppy person. Uh, these are internal. They look inside the person for an explanation. You're focusing on things like personality characteristics, or you can even focus on things like other personal characteristics like intelligence if with, it, with an internal attribution. And so with internal attributions, you also assume that the person has a degree of control over their own behavior and their own situation. Now, external attributions, on the other hand, you look outside the person. There's something about their situation that explains their behavior. That could be something like, oh, they must be late because they ran into really bad traffic. Oh, they must have had a car accident. Something must have happened to them that made them late. This person must be really disorganized right now because they must be overwhelmed with really unique uh, circumstances. Those are situations where you're looking outside the person for an explanation. You're making an external attribution. Now, for the rest of this video, I am going to uh, focus on internal attributions. Now that we got the difference between internal and external, let's go into some more detail about internal attributions. Is it a good thing or a bad thing to create an internal attribution? It can very much depend on the circumstance. Is that going to be an accurate attribution? Again, it's going to depend on the circumstance. Now, one thing about internal attributions. They can cause problems in some very specific areas. One area is where internal attributions can take on the form of blame. You can blame other people if they're in situations that aren't desirable. If they're in a situation that you wouldn't want to be in, if you make internal attributions, you're like, well, that's their fault that they're in this situation. It can lead to something that we call victim blaming, which I've mentioned in at least one video before and victim blaming is what it sounds like someone is in a uh, an undesirable situation you blame the victim you blame the victim for the situation that they're in uh you go out you go out to eat and a person has too much to drink and then they have a hangover the next day you can engage in victim blaming by saying that's what you get by drinking all right that that would be victim blaming. And I'll have some students say, well, isn't that justified? That person did get that way by drinking. Remember, we're not, we're not, we're not judging the behaviors here. We're not saying, you know, something is good or bad. We're, we're explaining it here. And so that would be victim blaming. All right. Um, you can also have victim blaming that is based on a misunderstanding of someone's situation. Sometimes you make an internal attribution that completely disregards external factors, or in many cases, you're not aware of the external factors. Like maybe the person who got drunk and they got the hangover the next day, maybe they've never really drunk before. Maybe they had a really strict upbringing. They were never allowed to have alcohol. Maybe they really don't know like how much is in a typical drink that's served at a restaurant. Uh, they have no experience and they wanted to fit in. They wanted you to think that they were cool and like, okay, everybody else is drinking. So I'm going to drink too. They might not realize they have a low tolerance or they might not realize that they ordered something that's, um, that, that's really, uh, um, uh, strong for them uh, and the and they 
you know, and, and they drink more than they anticipated. You know, they didn't mean to get drunk, but they got drunk. And, you know, so there are some external factors that you don't know about. They might also have like a meta metabolic issue. You, you know, they may be unaware that they're metabolizing that differently, or they have allergies or other conditions that can, that, that can interfere. These are all things that, you know, you don't know about it. You just focus on, well, you know, the, I know that they drank. And so I'm going to focus on that factor. I am going to say they, you know, this happened because they made that decision decision to drink. Maybe they're the person who makes those, those types of decisions. It's their fault. It is their fault. Um, internal attributions, sometimes they can emphasize personal responsibility. But in many situations, they can minimize or call attention away from situations or factors that we genuinely don't have control over. I've spoken in a previous video about how as human beings, we like to assume that we have control. And in some situations, we do at least have some control, but sometimes we overestimate our degree of control. Sometimes we don't like to acknowledge that there are many situations where we don't have a lot of control. And so um, this leads to uh, this, uh, this, 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 this term, this topic, this phenomenon called the just world hypothesis. It has other names. Sometimes people call this a just world belief. And I've also heard it called the just world fallacy. Now fallacy makes a mistake. And so that's when they're right, right away saying this is, this is not, a, not the best way to think. But boy, as human beings, boy, do we love to think this way. What is a just world? What is a just world belief? If you have belief in a just world, you believe that good things happen to people who kind of do what they're supposed to do and that the world is just, the world is fair. Bad things happen to people who have behaved badly in some way. People have asked for it. They've not done what they were supposed to do or they did something they weren't supposed to do. And so with the just world hypothesis or just world belief, this is if somebody's in an undesirable situation, it is because they asked for it in some way. It is entirely their fault. You are making internal attributions in this situation. And this has been applied to a variety of situations. Uh, when people are a victim of a crime, People love to justify uh, and create just world beliefs and blame the person like, hey, uh, you shouldn't have had such, um, you shouldn't have engaged in so much conspicuous consumption. You shouldn't have had so much fancy stuff and bragged about your fancy stuff. Then people, you know, then they wanted to rob you. When a person is a victim of sexual assault, we often ask them ridiculous questions like, what were you wearing? Implying, oh, if you weren't dressed so sexy, this wouldn't happen to you. Why do we do these sorts of things? Well, it's comforting. It's comforting for us to think, if I don't engage in these behaviors, these things will not happen to me. If I don't brag about my flashy stuff, I will not get robbed. If I don't wear skimpy, sexy, slutty clothes, that assault will not happen to me. Even if you know, logically, even if your logic tells you that statistics show that these things happen to people who don't engage in those behaviors, it is comforting to focus on the behaviors that we can control. We see people who have cancer and other undesirable medical conditions and medical situations that they will be exposed to questions about their lifestyle. Like people are trying to find things about their life that they can control so that they don't do those things. Like, oh, did you ever smoke? Did you take vitamins? Did you exercise? Did you eat your five to seven daily servings of fruits and vegetables like they tell you to do? And it's, people are doing that because they're trying to find something like, oh, you didn't do that and you got sick. Okay, if I do that, I won't get sick. We focus on the controllable factors. Uh, I have applied this in my own line of research. Uh, my research on people's misperceptions of miscarriage or pregnancy loss. By the way, in the United States, we do have a lot of myths and misperceptions about how pregnancy works, including pregnancy loss. You can read about that in, in my article. Uh, you can find it through Google Scholar. Um, but in my research, I link belief in a just world to misunderstandings, believing in myths about miscarriage. Uh, and so we'll see that when someone loses a pregnancy, even though science shows us that that can happen to anybody. No matter how healthy you are, 
pregnancy is complicated. Pregnancy is tricky. Take my developmental psychology class if you want to know even more about it. And uh, people will ask questions like, oh, did you take your prenatal vitamins? They will focus on controllable factors uh, rather than just, uh, just helping the person deal with this uncontrollable thing happened to me. Uh, in the vast majority of cases, it is an uncontrollable situation, but people tend to focus on the controllable factors. They exhibit their just world beliefs right just world beliefs are linked to victim blaming and they do involve internal attributions now um a related topic is locus of control locus of control i'm going to go over in a separate video